Hi guys, it's Shamila. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be sharing with you guys some of my recent reads. It's been a while. I haven't done any wrap ups for a while. So I'm going to try to hit you guys with some book reviews real quick. Get you some tea, some drinks, some things because I got me a nice little stack here. And I can't wait to share with you guys. So let's get started. So we are going to start off with. The Burning God by R. Kwong. I read this book. I don't even know. I'm not even gonna say when I read these books. I'm just, I'm just reviewing. But this is the third book in the Poppy War trilogy. And as you guys probably know, I really love the Poppy War. I really love the Dragon Republic. And reading the third book was very bittersweet. You have Ren, who is a character that is just completely off the wall. Homegirl, you know, she started from the bottom and now she's here. But at the the same time she's going way too far so this book is just Ren really embracing the phoenix and it's kind of scary like she scares me I'm like sis you got you got to make better decisions but I know she's not but <laughs> It's complicated, but yeah, the ending to this book really, really just broke my heart. Like, I have a vlog where you can see my reaction, but it broke me, like, bad. Even though I kind of felt like there was no other way for it to end, but it still hurt, like, a lot. Like, it really, really hurt me. And I'm still recovering. I will say, though, I think that maybe I read it too fast, but I kind of felt like it wrapped up very quickly. And that was the only reason I didn't give it five stars well there were some other reasons there were a couple laggy parts for me but i did enjoy it but i think my favorite might be the dragon republic out of the three but yeah it was still really really good i still think rf kwong is a great writer and i did really enjoy it <laughs> like it was a ride it was a roller coaster but yeah i finally finished this trilogy and i'm so happy uh, so yeah, I would say I gave this a 4.25 maybe. 4.25. I feel like it's a little more than a 4 star. A little less than a 5. So we're going to say 4.25. But yeah, I definitely recommend this trilogy. It's it's good <laughs> moving on so the next book i read after that was if you leave me by crystal hana kim this book was in my opinion good like it was pretty good it definitely hurt my feelings a lot though and there are some things that are very cringeworthy as far as misogyny abuse cheating all kinds of stuff that you should be aware of so i, I would read the reviews for this just to kind of get an idea of the trigger warnings maybe things that might be not fun to read about but this book hurt me and the main character Hamie is complicated for sure it starts off with Hamie she's 16 years old and the north or i'm assuming the north means north korea from what i can remember invades her village and it kind of shows the effects of that invasion but when she's 16 she's in love with her childhood friend kyungwan but he ends up leaving and going off to join the army and it kind of leaves her in the in the wind kind of him leaving and she ends up marrying his older cousin jisoo and it's her life over the spin of many years after she makes the decision to marry his cousin Jisoo and what the consequences of that decision were for her all the way up until the end and you even at some point follow her children's perspectives and it was just very interesting and the way this story was woven together and it just hurt in a real life kind of way. Usually I don't really flock to historical fiction but but this one was good and it broke my heart. I gave it, I would say probably like a 3.5 stars. I would recommend it if you're looking for a heartbreaking historical fiction that is written by an Asian author. I believe she's Korean and so this would make this own voices but it was just good and heartbreaking and it's one of those stories that don't just stick to one time, one period. The, the book really does follow the question though, what 
if? Like, what if I had made this huge life-changing decision? What if I had married the love of my life? What if, what if, what if? And this book also kind of follows like generational trauma, generational curses, like breaking those things or not breaking those things, like not being able to break out of those things even though you want to. That was this book. I did enjoy it and it's beautiful, really stunning cover. So yeah. The next book I read after that was The Worst Best Man by Mia Sosa. This was a book that I did thoroughly enjoy. I do wish I tapped it. So you have the main character Carolina Santos and she is a expert wedding planner. She plans these big beautiful elaborate personalized weddings. She's great at what she does but she's doing it at a smaller level that is not keeping the food on the table honey. It's not paying the bills. Okay. Okay. And then you have the male character Max Hartley who ends up working with Carolina and she ends up actually getting picked up by this big hotel who is giving her a chance to pretty much prove herself. But what ends up happening is Max is supposed to present this presentation for this big plan for the event for the hotel etc. Needless to say it's awkward but to add to it Max is also the person who convinced Carolina's fiance not to marry her. So there's some love to hate type of or <laughs> love to hate. <laughs> There's some hate to love here and it was just a really fun time. I think Carolina is Portuguese. Is she Brazilian? I don't know. She is something like that. I can't remember because it's been a little bit since I read this but it is a fun fast romance and I think that a lot of people could enjoy it. It's also spicy. This is for an older audience so I want you little baby children's trying to read this. This for the big boys. This for the adults okay <laughs> but yeah it had a nice spice factor to it and it was just a lot of fun it also had the one room one bed trope we love to see it so yeah there's this the next book i read was clap when you land by elizabeth acevedo this was a little bit of a tearjerker this is a book about two sisters who are from different parts of the world one is from new york city and the other one is from the Dominican Republic and they don't know about each other and they end up finding out that they are related and that the other exists when their father dies in a plane crash and things have to be arranged for his funeral and things like that. So her father, their father had two families and one was in secret and they're both trying to navigate this new information and whether they actually want to have a sister or not. It has its heartwarming and touching moments. This is not my favorite out of the three Elizabeth Acevedo books but it was still pretty good and I gave it a 3.5 stars as well and yeah it was just a generally enjoyable read. Her writing as always is just very good and the characters are relatable for sure. And the things that they go through are relatable and I just I very generally enjoyed this. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> the next book we have here is To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini. I finished this big bad chunky monkey. I finished it. Okay I am so proud of myself but this one ended up being so fun and it's such a good science fiction but anyway let's get to what it's about. So this book is about Kira Navarez. She goes on a she goes on a routine survey mission on an uncomfortable colonized planet and she ends up finding this ancient alien relic which causes all hell to break loose. There may be interplanetary wars, you know, like alien attacks, battleships, things, you know, the science fiction that we love to see is all up in here, okay? This is a big clunky chunky and even though it is a chunky book, it did not, it was not hard to read for me personally. I feel like there was a great amount of action. I feel like I actually did like Kira. I'm not saying she has the most personality in the world, but she was an enjoyable character to follow throughout 
this book and the storyline was fun uh the beginning i personally feel like really grips you and makes you invested in the rest of the story and the last line of the book took me out the game but yes i really 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 enjoyed this and i gave it five out of five stars i had been waiting to read a good science fiction for a while now and this just hit really really good so i personally recommend it if you're okay with sitting through a pretty hefty book but i found it worth it i don't know maybe you will too but yeah i love this like alien uh takeover type of thing that's kind of something i enjoy in books and i felt like it was very well done in this one right here so yeah if you enjoy that type of thing maybe you should pick it up just saying you should give it a shot just saying thank you olivia for this book i thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it so thank you <laughs> okay so the next book i read after that was a court of silver flames by sarah j mass this book is thick as i don't know what and don't let this don't let these tabs fool you okay <laughs> but anyway this is the fifth book in the a court of thorns and roses series this follows nestar chiron who is Feyre's older sister and cassian you know cassian who doesn't know cassian but it follows cassian as well and this book it didn't really I feel like this book could have been half as long as it was and still done the same thing. I feel like sometimes people don't want to tell Sarah J Maas that she can shorten these books like they're, they they do too much sometimes and there was a lot of parts in here that were dragging. 50% of this book was Nesta on the stairs and sex scenes so I <laughs> I gave this book three stars. It had its enjoyable moments for sure but I just feel like I could have enjoyed it a lot more if it wasn't so gosh dang long and also if it wasn't about Nesta <laughs> no but I'm, I'm kidding but so I get that Nesta has trauma and she has to work through it and she's awful because she hates herself and so she projects her hate for herself towards other people maybe I'm misunderstanding that but she was doing the absolute most she's always doing the absolute most I get the trauma aspect but also you have to have responsibility for your actions and how you treat people also Rice and mm, I I just felt like he was kind of like like in some instances I felt like he was justified towards how he treated Nesta but at the same time he was hypocritical and judgmental but when I think about it like if someone was treating my husband the way Nesta treats Feyre I would jack them up I don't care if they're a sibling or not like you need to have some respect put some respect on my baby's name you know what I'm saying so I guess in a way Ryson was justified but I kind of feel like the way he came off a lot of time in this book really threw me for a loop and I didn't like it kind of like made me ugh, like towards his character I think it was just the way she wrote him but it also gave the perspective that you're looking at him for through a lens that is not Feyre's so I don't know there that then we have Cassian um we have Cassian who is Cassian I like Cassian and there were moments in this book where he stuck it to Nesta and I like that but I don't know I just felt like there was like so so many smut scenes like and what was the point of the plot being there because it really wasn't there like it was there and it tried for no reason it should have just been no plot and ah I have just a lot of mixed feelings about this and this thing is heavy as crap but anyways I feel like there's so much she could have done with this book that she didn't and she had so many pages to do it and it just didn't really work for me I I as far as rankings the highest is Court of Mist and Fury then it's Court of Wings and ruin then it is this book then a quarter thorns and roses and then a uh, quarter frost and starlight it's somewhere in the middle it's just it was just it was okay like 
and also the whole time I was reading this book I was just like Miss Mass have you not gotten some in a while like I feel like your whole purpose in this book was just sex sex and things sex and things okay and also I kind of feel like I wanted more development of Nesta and Cassian's relationship I felt like a lot of their relationship in this book was purely physical and then it just like escalated to being like I would die for you and I'm just like oh I mean I guess I'll take it but I don't know like I felt like too much of their relationship was physical and they needed to like actually really really go a lot deeper but it had those moments but I don't know it was just it was just okay I did have fun uh annotating this that's why it's so freaking tabbed up I, I was just having fun picking on the book <laughs> But yeah, this is a three star. <laughs> Ooh, child, the getaway. All right, the next book I read, definitely a favorite, and that is The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. This book was so good to me. Now, warning violence out the wazoo we have all forms of torture terrible awful torture happening in this book this book is about Deka, and she lives in a world where having red blood means you're pure and having gold blood means you're impure and it's severely very much hated in this world and there is a ceremony that girls go through like up until the ceremony they cannot injure themselves they cannot cut themselves none of that so they are super careful and they don't know what their blood runs until the ceremony happens and if it runs gold they are in big trouble but of course our main character Deka ends up having gold blood and it just escalates from there it really escalates I don't want to say too much more because honestly going into this book I didn't really know too too much about the plot but it really goes hard like I love the writing I love how the author didn't shy away from the hardship that Deka goes through because you really come to understand her growth and her confidence level Level going up oh, oh, oh and that's another thing that's kind of like explored in this book kind of like religious manipulation and brainwashing which is something that happens like you will have a religion that's fine on its own but then people use it to manipulate people and do horrible things to them and justify doing those horrible things so that was explored a bit and Deka ends up finding her own understandings and beliefs and and realizing that she's been manipulated and she is hurt by so many in this book and she constantly justifies why this is happening to her and doesn't blame people for what they're doing to her because she believes that religiously like she's cursed like she's horrible and she deserves all this pain and by the end of the book she grows so much from that mentality and it's just kind of beautiful but I will say that it definitely hurts like the whole first half of this book probably really hurts as far as what she has to go through to get to that point but I did really enjoy Deka as a character. I enjoyed her friendships and her sisterhoods that were formed in this book and her awakening as a warrior was just everything. I also enjoyed her companion Kata and also there's another companion in this book who I just adore because I love like animal companion tropes. So yeah, it's just a good ride. Like I, I don't want to sell it as being too fun because definitely the torturous stuff is not fun. But it's so good and I just, I don't know why this book isn't raved about more. It's so good. I loved it personally and I highly recommend it. Five out of five stars to this one and I can't wait for the next one. I'm so excited. Excited. So the next book I read was a reread and it was so much fun. Me, Monet, and Jocelyn did a live show together for it and it was my first live show. It was so fun. I love them absolutely positively. <laughs> but we read Strange to Dreamer by Lainey Taylor and when I tell you this book hit even harder the second time like when I tell you it was better than the first time I read it, it really was. Like, it was spectacular. I loved it. I 
want to reread again <laughs> but yeah it was just so good and I absolutely still 100% recommend it just the way Lenny puts together this fantasy this mythology this story and these characters it's just so good it's so worth it I just really really hope that someone picks up this book per my recommendation and loves it as much as I do. I did not expect, like, I don't reread books that often, but I did not expect to fly through this the way I did upon the second read and to love it even more than the first time. Like, I didn't think that was possible. It was just amazing. <laughs> but this book is about a character named Laszlo Strange, and he's a dreamer. He's always wanted to visit this mythical city called Weep and there's just this whole mystery surrounding Weep and he's like a librarian and it's just I don't know how to explain it I don't know what to say to make you guys interested but what I will say is that I did not just reread this book I also reread Muse of Nightmares and Muse of Nightmares was spec spectacular this is five out of five stars and this is six out of five like they're both so freaking good but i definitely realized upon rereading that muse of nightmares is everything it hits so hard you're gonna start this book and you're gonna be like who are these people why should i care about them you're gonna care eventually you're gonna care and it's gonna matter and it's gonna affect the story so much so just hang in there hang in there kiddo it's so good and just the feelings that she puts you through i'm here for the feels and just in general her characters are so complex so compelling so amazing to read about and i know i know you probably heard that there's a little insta love situation happening here it's okay this is the this is the one time that this is completely okay with me so yeah and it just makes sense like I, I, I could go into all these details but if you want more of my thoughts on this read my vlog read what what <laughs> read my vlog watch my vlog where I reread both of these books because I let you know all of my thoughts and they're just they're just amazing they're so good i actually got to annotate stranger dreamer again and i just can you tell it's an obsession can you tell i absolutely loved it and i know i know you just saw a court of silver flames and it was very annotated but bleh, this is where it's at <laughs> this is the real deal the real this is where it's at next up we have another favorite and that is Amari and the Night Brothers by B.B. Alston. This book is five out of five stars. This is about a girl named Amari Peters and her older brother Quentin goes missing and this is devastating for both her and her mother. He had this amazing job. He was an agent and he goes missing they can't find him the police said that pretty much his job didn't exist he was not an agent and they're confused and it's just it's, it's sad and they miss him so much and it hurts but anyways so so quentin leaves amari a special invitation to his summer camp that he went to so quentin nominates his younger sister amari to join the bureau of supernatural affairs and amari accepts this invitation or this nomination and goes for it in order to figure out what has happened to her brother Quentin and where has he gone. It's just so good. This is the this is a middle grade and it's a middle grade I wish I had at the age of 11 or 12 because I would have ate this book. I would have devoured this book. It is so good. I'm saving it for my daughter so she can read it when she gets older. It's just so good. Like, <gasps> I loved how this book 
still address the struggles of how our society looks at young black girls and how there's always going to be stereotypes and judgments that people put on you but that doesn't mean you let those stereotypes and judgments shrink your abilities and yourself and your confidence and that's just something such an amazing message for young girls and boys who are going to read this and I just I my heart I'm so happy that kids have books like these now because I did not. I'm so happy that this book exists. I loved Amari finding her confidence and realizing that her comparing herself to her brother is something that she shouldn't do because it's, her brother was literally like a star agent and she keeps comparing herself before she realizes that she has her own talents and her own abilities and it's just wonderful and if you love a magic school setting and you love men in black I really feel like you'll love this book like I don't know that's just the vibes that I get I loved all the magical and fantastical elements and the creativity that the author took with it and it was just so whimsical so fun and you should read it okay guys so we have reached our last book of this video and that is shadow and bone by Lee Bardugo this is my first Lee Bardugo book and it was it was I would give it a three a three star and the reason I'm gonna give it a three star which isn't a bad rating because I thought this was gonna be a one star so the reason I give it a three star is because I feel like it wasn't as interesting as I wanted it to be it wasn't boring but it wasn't as it didn't bring me in as much as I wanted it to it took me a little longer than I would have liked for a book this size like I did enjoy the setting I found the world building interesting I definitely like the storyline of the fold and the darkness and the darkling and Elena and Mal and all of that it was all very interesting the execution was okay I mean it was well enough it didn't do anything extra for me and that is why it sits in the middle at a three star I also felt like there was these realizations that Elena would have and I was just kind of sitting there like one plus one equals four I don't understand how we got here <laughs> but I went with it but I am interested in continuing with the second and third book it wasn't spectacular but it was good um but anyway this book is about Elena Starkov and she is a map maker along with her friend Mal and they grew up together they were orphans they live in this world where this thing called the fold which is a wall of darkness surrounds their homeland and people travel through this darkness in order to try to do trade and stuff like they're completely cut off from the world on the other side of this fold and there are things that are needed from other lands you know I've heard of like importing things you know what I'm saying they take trips into the fold and it's extremely dangerous because there are these creatures called the Valkyrie and they will murder your ass so Elena ends up uh going out onto one of these excursions and she lights up like a light bulb and everybody's like whoa she's the sun summoner it's crazy she's gonna save us all because she can light up and it's great that she can light up and the darkling's like I'm gonna use you you're mine I own you owned <laughs> I don't know this is like the worst absolute worst <laughs> description ever but that's the book there's a tv show I'm gonna start it because I finished the first book. But yeah, you guys, those are all the books that I've read recently and I don't think I've reviewed for you guys at all. Um, definitely follow me on Goodreads if you want to know like my ratings. I don't really do reviews. It's something that I want to start doing, but I don't really do reviews. So you can follow me on Goodreads just to see what I'm reading and whatnot. If you see me reading a book for three months, mind your business. <laughs> I also have my Instagram, which is booked with Jamila if you want to follow that. I'm not as active as I wish I was on there, but you get some you get some fun little reels every once in a while, a little picture. 
little picture here and there, you know, so you can check that out. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm sorry for being super inactive. It's driving me nuts. I really want to be consistent, so here we are trying. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. Bye!